Carl Jung talked about this phenomena, he cried, phenomenon, he described as retrogressive restoration of the persona. It's a complicated idea, but basically what it means is that sometimes you take a leap forward and you learn some things, but you can't catalyze a new identity. So you try to go back and hide in your old identity. And that actually doesn't work because, well, things have changed and you've learned something and that isn't who you are anymore. And so it's like you have to cut part, parts of yourself off in a destructive manner to fit back into the person that you were. What happens here is that Pinocchio escapes from this tyrannical situation and undergoes this descent into chaos, but he tries to go back home. He tries to go back to what he was and he can't do that anymore. His father isn't at home anymore. And so, so when he goes home, he finds that there's no home there. Now, this happens to people sometimes, and it's often a shock to them. So one of the things I've noticed about Peter Pan type, I'm gonna speak about men here because I, I've observed it more in men, is that they'll often stay under the thumb of their father. And you think, well, why would someone do that? Because it means they're subject to the tyrannical judgment of their father. They're always concerned about what their father would think or whether their father approves of him of them and so forth and you think well that's got to be an unpleasant place to be why would you do that well, one of the things that I've suggested to my clients and to other people sometimes is that here's a weird little exercise that you can undertake a little thought experiment so you have your parents and of course your parents have friends who are about their age and maybe some of them are people you only know peripherally and I might ask you, well, do you care more about what your parents think than you care about what these peripheral people who know your parents think? And then the answer to that is, well, of course. And then the question that arises out of that is, why? I mean, for someone else, your parents are the peripheral people and their parents are central. Like, why is it logical that your parents make, opinion makes any more difference to you than the appearance, than the, uh, uh, the opinion of some randomly selected people who are approximately that age. Why is it the case that you would consider that they would know more than someone else? I mean, I know they know you better and fair enough, but that, that's not the point. And then another point there is that to the degree that your parents' opinion about you matters more than some randomly selected people of approximately the same age, Jung would say, well, you haven't exactly separated out the God image from your parents. And so you're still under that, that combination. It's like, it's a co complicated thing to talk about, but think about the Harry Potter series. Harry has two sets of parents, right? He's got the Dursley parents, and then he's got these like magical parents that sort of float behind and he should know the difference between them. They shouldn't be one and the same. They're not for him. And it's like, well, you have your parents and you have nature and culture as parents and you shouldn't be thinking that your parents are nature and culture as well. They shouldn't have final dominion over you. It means that you're not an individual yet, if that's the case. Freud said, for example, that no, no, no one could be a man unless his father had died. And Jung said, yes, but that death can take place symbolically. Okay, so there's that part of the idea. And then another part of the idea is one of the times in your life when you actually realize that you're an individual is when you'll go and ask your parents something and you'll realize they actually don't know any more about what you should do than you do. And that sucks. And that's partly why people are often willing to maintain a tyrant slave relationship with their father. It's like, on the one hand, you have to be inferior in a relationship like that. You know, you've always got the judge watching you. But on the other hand, there's always someone who knows what to do. There's always someone standing between you and the unknown that you can go ask, what should I do? Well, at some point you'll realize that the reason you can't ask that anymore is because they actually don't know any more than you do. And then that's a pain, like that, that is a symbolic death. And that's also when you establish a more individual relationship with your parents. It's at that point that you could conceivably start taking care of them instead of the reverse. And that's a time that should come, but you have to let that image of perfection go and that exposes you. Well, that's what happens here. You know, Pinocchio goes home and he wants 
things to be the way they were, and he wants to stay under the careful care of the benevolent father, but that's no longer possible. He's past that point, and that's why the father has disappeared. And so Geppetto has gone off to look for Pinocchio because he also needs his son, but, but in any case, the house is abandoned. And so then there, we see inside the house that everything's covered with cobwebs and everything's gone and Pinocchio and the cricket sit on the steps and they're very concerned. First of all, they wonder where he went, so they're actually concerned that he's gone, but they also don't know what to do because there's just no going home. And so, you know, that's also the case that once you hit a certain point in your development, well, it's the same thing we already talked about. The answers that you're looking for are not going to be found in your parents' house. It's as simple as that. Now, you could artificially maintain your dependency, but, you know, if you do that for too long, things get pretty ugly. So you get pretty stale and, and you know, you're like bread that's been on the shelf for too long. So that's actually a good, it's a rough lesson, but it's a good hallmark for figuring out whether or not you're, you've got yourself adjusted properly and in relationship to your siblings. It's like, you're the thing that can, you're not, you're not the plan. You're the thing that can confront the obstacle to the plan. And then when you know even further that the obstacle is not only an obstacle, but opportunity itself, well, then your whole view of the world can change because you might think, well, I've got this plan. Something came up to object to it. It's like, it's possible that the thing that's objecting has something to teach you that will take you to the place where you develop an even better plan. That's a nice framework to use. It's like, are you so sure that this is a problem? Is that the only way that you can look at it? Or is it an opportunity? I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, naively optimistic. There are some things that's pretty hard to extract gold from some dragons, and maybe the death of a family member is a good example of that. But in, even in a situation like that, I can tell you that it's an opportunity for, it's an opportunity for maturation, that's for sure. And the thing is, you might say, well, it's pretty miserable to go, to be digging for gold when someone's falling into the grave. Well, if they really love you, first of all, that's what they'll want you to do. And second, you're going to make their death a lot more palatable experience for them. If you're someone who can be in the room and be helpful instead of be, you know, quivering in the corner and feeling that the entire world is collapsing in on you. I mean, that's another. You want to be the useful person at the funeral. How's that for a goal? That's a good goal, man. You know that you've got yourself together in a situation like that because you're going to be at them. And maybe you want to be the person on whose shoulder people cry. That'd be a good goal. It's kind of, you know, I don't like being naively optimistic. So when I tell you to get your life together, I'm not going to say roses and sunshine. It's like that's 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 pablum for fools. But it really is something to be the reliable person at a funeral.